All right, in this video, if you watched the previous video, we talked about how to make confidence intervals with means and how to decide whether you use the normal distribution or the t-distribution. And the only difference is if you do not know the population standard deviation and you have to use an estimate, you know the sample standard deviation, s, then you use the t-distribution. That's the difference. That's that's just the context. Those are the keywords you look for. So let me show you a, an example standard textbook kind of problem where you would have to make that decision. And let's see what the confidence interval turns out to be. Okay, here's a, here's a standard textbook kind of problem where you're asked to make a confidence interval. So let's read it carefully and see what we need to do next. In order to estimate the average computer time spent on computer terminals at a university, data were collected from a sample of 81 business students over a one-week period. Assume the population standard deviation is 1.2 hours. The sample mean was 9 hours. Make a 95% confidence interval. Okay? So when you make a confidence interval, the basic formula looks like this. Take the sample mean, add or subtract either a z or a t, depending on which distribution you can use, times a standard error of the mean. And if you're using a t, usually we write the standard error of the mean this way. And again, why do we write it differently? Well, remember, when do you use a t? You use a t when you don't know the population standard deviation. So again, my rule one, you can use the normal distribution when you know the population standard deviation. Now these other things are critical too, but we're just focusing on this part right now. Um, you use a t distribution when you have to estimate the standard deviation with a sample standard deviation, right? So you use an estimate. You calculate the standard deviation from the sample of data. You don't know the population standard deviation outside of the data. So reading this question, do we know the population standard deviation? That's the question that we're asking ourselves. And the answer is yes. They say assume the population standard deviation is 1.2 hours. And we're assuming that because we, we probably really wouldn't know it if somebody didn't tell us to assume that. So we're going to be using this first formula here and we're going to be using a normal distribution. So again, we're making a 95% confidence interval. And so we just have to figure out, we have to, have to plug in three things here. What is our sample mean? Well, they tell us that's 9. What z-score do you use for 95%? Well, you use 1.96, so plus and minus 1.96. And what is the standard error? Well, the formula for the standard error is always take the standard deviation you know, whether it's a population or a sample standard deviation does not matter, and you divide it by the square root of n. So in this case, we're going to take the standard deviation, 1.2, and we're going to divide it by the square root of 81, which is 9. Okay, so 1.2 divided by the square root of 81 equals 0.9. Sorry, I think I hit the wrong button in my calculator there. Okay, we get 0 0.133. 133 is our standard error. So that tells us, our standard error tells us that it'll be pretty common for our sample mean to be within 0.133 of the truth, of the real mean, right? So this is a common distance between our sample mean and the true mean. And that's what we fill in here in the rest of the uh, confidence interval formula, 0.133. So now we multiply the z-score times the 0.133 because we want to go out 1.96 standard errors to 
be 95% sure that we're going to be in this interval. So 0.133 times 1.96 gives us 0 0.26068. So our confidence interval would be 9 plus or minus 0 0.26068. And so one way you see confidence interval written, confidence intervals written is just to leave them written like this, 9 plus or minus some number. Uh, it's just as common to see people go ahead and add and subtract that number from the sample mean. So let's do it both ways here. If we subtract 9, we get 8.73932 up 2. And if we add 9, we just got 9.26068. And so we are 95% sure, since this is a 95% confidence interval, and we're using the Z for 95%, we're 95% sure that the population mean is somewhere in this range, right? That's what we think is in there. We're not certain that the population mean is in that range, but there's a 5% chance that it's not. And that's that alpha, the 1 minus 95%, right? So again, we'd call the 0.95 our confidence coefficient alpha would be 0.05 in this case. That's just a measure of how, how unconfident we are. And the useful thing about alpha is if you divide it by 2, that's what you use to look up the z-score. You look that up in the probabilities in the middle of the table to find what z-score to use. Okay, so this is a common problem where you would use a z-score. Now, when would you use a t? Well, let's look at the next problem. I've just changed a couple of key words here. In order to estimate the average computer time spent on the computer terminals at a university, data were collected from a sample of 81 business students over a one-week period. From the data, the mean was calculated to be 9 hours, and the standard deviation was 1.2 hours. Make a 95% confidence interval. Now look at the subtle, subtle differences here between these two. Here it said, assume the population standard deviation is 1.2 hours. And here, we say from the data, the mean was calculated to be 9 hours. So that tells you that's a sample mean. And the standard deviation was 1.2 hours. From the data that was calculated, that tells you that's an S. That's a sample standard deviation. So we don't know the population standard deviation. And this is one way of making a this clear in a question is from the data or from these 81 students the standard deviation was 1.2 hours okay everything else is the same so this tells us that we're going to use the t distribution and the two things you have to know about a t distribution in order to find the t you use so so our our confidence interval is going to look like this sample mean plus or minus some t times some standard error. Okay, so the standard error is going to be the same as in the previous question. It doesn't matter if it's a sample standard deviation or a population standard deviation. The standard error is always calculated the same way. It's going to be the 1.2 over the square root of 81. All right, so it's still going to be that point oh, right, sorry, 1.133 that we got before. It's the T that's going to be different. We have to use a T because we're not sure this is really the standard deviation. That's probably wrong. Could be too high, could be too low. And because we're uncertain about the standard deviation, this T is going to make our confidence interval a little wider to take into account that uncertainty. Now, when you look up a T, you have to know two things. You have to know alpha over 2, and you have to know n minus 1. In minus 1, we call the degrees of freedom in this case. And so what's n minus 1? Well, n is 81, and so n minus 1 is going to be 80. And what's alpha over 2? Well, if it's a 95% confidence interval, alpha is the other 5%, and alpha over 2 is 0.025. So if you have a different confidence interval, like if it was 
confidence interval. Alpha would be 0 0.10 and alpha over 2 would be 0 0.05. Okay? Oh, sorry. If it was 80%, I misspoke. If it was an 80% confidence interval, alpha would be 0 0.20 and alpha over 2 would be 0 0.10. Okay? So it's just whatever the, the other percentage is that you're not confident about. It's the percentage chance that you're going to be wrong with this confidence interval. So let's go find this T on the T table. So here's my T table that I have in Excel. And so what we want to do is, since we're still looking at a 95% confidence interval, that alpha over 2 tells us which column to look at. So it could be this column over here, or it could be this column over here. It just depends on, if, on our degrees of freedom. So I have low degrees of freedom, 1 to 50 in this, on this side. And I have 51 up through, even though I skipped some, a billion there, um, on this right side. And so in this question, we had 81 was our sample size. So we want to go to 80 degrees of freedom, n minus 1. And what we want to do is look at where those two intersect. So 80 degrees of freedom, alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. We're going to be using 1.9901 as our T here. So let's go back and finish our calculations. So our T from our table, 1.9901. And... Remember that your T that you use is always going to be a little bit bigger than the Z you would use in the same situation. Since we use 1.96 for the Z, this follows that rule. It's a little bit bigger, and it's going to make our confidence interval a little bit wider. And we multiply that times our standard error, 0.133, and we assume the same sample mean, 9 hours. So let's put our 9 there. And let's see what this confidence interval looks like. Let's calculate our margin of error, which is the T, 1.9901 times 0.133. So that margin of error is just that plus or minus number that we add and subtract. So uh, our sample mean plus or minus the margin of error, 0.26468. So let's just round that to 0.47. Okay, so that 0.2647 is our E, our margin of error. And again, we could leave our confidence interval this way. Some people do. 9 plus or minus 0.2647 hours. We're 95% sure that the true mean is somewhere in that range. Or sometimes people will add and subtract the number. I prefer actually adding and subtracting the number so that I can see... What is, what is this range of numbers that we're talking about? So another way to write this confidence interval would be we're 95% sure that the true mean is somewhere between 8.7353 up to 9 plus that, 9.2647. So that's a couple of examples of problems and how to tell. Do I use the Z or the T? and the, mecha the mechanics of the calculations of calculating a confidence interval. Now in the next video, we'll look at calculating confidence intervals for proportions. And it's actually quite a bit simpler because you always use the Z when you're calculating confidence intervals for proportions.